Monster Hunter Wilds is incredibly popular right now. The game is blowing up with over 1.3 million concurrent players on Steam alone, but it has a huge flaw. Wilds is unoptimized and the game is running poorly for a lot of people. And even many players with higher end PCs cannot reach high frame rates with good quality because of all of these optimization issues. However, in today's video I'm going to be showing you a couple of tools that you can use that will help you improve your copy of Monster Hunter Wilds and hopefully improve your frame rate. I will be going through a couple of different processes, some of which including downloading third-party tools, which I will leave a link to all of those tools below the like button, and I'll also be going through a few settings that you can change and a couple of other things that you can tweak on your own PC, just so you can get some better performance without having to install anything. So with that being said, hello everyone, my name is Dark Hero, and let's get started. Now before you start messing around with your computer, you're going to need three things. First, you will want to turn on hardware accelerate to GPU, which you can find by going into System, Display and then Graphics, and then here under Advanced Graphics Settings, you're going to turn on Hardware Accelerated GPU Scheduling. The second thing you're going to need is one temporary folder, which is going to be empty, as we are going to be downloading a few things and putting them on here before you delete them once we are done with the process. We're also going to need to have a folder open with the game's directory, so the way to locate this is by opening up Steam, clicking on Monster Hunter Wilds and go ahead and ignore my playtime clicking here on manage and browse local files. So now that you have done these things, we're going to be downloading something called RE Framework. If you are at all familiar with downloading mods for Resident Evil, Dragon's Dogma or any other Monster Hunter game, you'll be familiar with RE Framework, as it is pretty much mandatory to not only improve the overall performance of the game, but also allows you to change the script and add a bunch of different things such as reshades, mods and whatever else that you otherwise would not be able to do. So so yeah, you're going to go ahead and download the RE framework by going here into files and selecting manual download. Once the download is complete, all you need to do is open up this folder and you're going to want to extract this DLL file into the game's directory like this. I already have this, that's why I'm getting this pop-up, but for you, you should be able to do it just fine. And now that you have the RE framework installed, we're going to go ahead and launch the game just to make sure that it is correctly installed. And as you can see, since we have this menu right here, it means that we have correctly installed installed the RE framework. That is all we needed so we can go ahead and quit out of the game. Now we're also going to be downloading a couple of additional software that is also going to help boost the overall FPS of the game. Truth be told, the RE framework is going to be doing a lot of the heavy lifting here as it really is a tool that does it all and by itself is already going to help boost the overall performance of the game. So just with the RE framework alone you should already see a noticeable improvement in the overall frame rate of the game but if you want to take it a step further then you can go ahead and follow the next instructions. In case you are wondering how Capcom feels about this sort of thing, is it considered cheating and would they ban you for this? As many of you know I have been covering the Monster Hunter games and how Capcom feels about mods for a very long time and there was only a single instance in which Capcom officially talked about mods which was during Sunbreak, the expansion to Monster Hunter Rise. So let me actually pull up my own video here. Let's see. The team have identified an issue around some save data on the Nintendo Switch version of Monster Hunter Rise Sunbreak. The team have also identified that some players are illegally modifying game data for anomaly investigations. Accessing game data that cannot be achieved through normal gameplay can cause serious issues, including making the game unplayable. Be vigilant and avoid this content. And they made a special note regarding illegal mods. We have confirmed that some players are illegally modifying game data for anomaly investigations. We are currently preparing a separate notification regarding how to recognize illegally modified anomaly investigations and again creating or using game data that cannot be achieved through normal means can cause issues while playing the game and even make the game itself unplayable. So if you see any quests that you might think might have been illegally modified please delete them immediately and do not try them out. Ultimately while Capcom hasn't been very clear on their stance in regards to mods they've never really actually went out of their way to punish people over it. So if you're simply using these kinds of third-party tools or mods to improve 
the performance of the game or if you're using them for cosmetic purposes or even for some cheats I guess. So long as that doesn't infringe on other players I think that they are totally fine with it because they don't want people ruining the experience for others and I think that that is respectable. I've personally always used mods in Monster Hunter World and Rise to give myself more options for layered armor and weapons and especially in Rise I also used the mod that helped change my HUD layout because honestly it was a little bit of a clusterfuck. And again I've never had any issues with it, I've never been DM'd by Capcom to not use any of these mods in my videos so I wouldn't worry too much about this. And now we're going to be downloading a couple of softwares, one that is called DLSS4 and DLSS Swapper Glitch. To put it simply Monster Hunter Wilds launched with an outdated DLSS and with these two softwares we will be able to change the DLSS in Monster Hunter Wilds to the one that is currently updated. If you play Dragon's Dogma 2 on release this was something that many of you probably also did to improve the overall performance of the game. So here we have the GitHub page of the DLSS Swapper and we're going to go ahead and select the second one right here the DLSS Swapper 1.1.6.2 installer.exe and we're also going to be getting the nvidia profile inspector which again you'll find in the description below the like button and we're going to download the first one the nvidia profile inspector revamp.zip now that you have downloaded the DLSS Swapper installer, you're going to go ahead and actually install this. And since I already have it, I'm just going to go ahead and click here on recently added and open the DLSS Swapper. And inside the DLSS Swapper, you're going to want to make sure that you have Monster Hunter Wilds right here. If you don't find the game here under the Steam tab, then you'll want to press add game right here. Press that game once again and you're going to need to look for the games directory. So all you need to do is you copy and then you paste the games directory right here and then select game folder, which of course I'm not able to do right now since the game is already here. That said, what you want to do now is come here on the left side to library and you will want to download four different DLL files from here. On the first tab, the DLSS, we're going to be downloading the version 310.2.1. On the second tab, DLSS frame generation, we're going to be downloading 310.2. On the third tab, FSR 3.1 Direct X12, we're downloading the first one. And on FSR 3.1 Vulcan, we're also downloading the first one and before you close out of the application go ahead and refresh and click export all we're going to be exporting this zip folder inside of our temporary folder like i have done right here now we're going back to our temporary folder this is where we have the dlss that we have exported through the dlss swapper and we're going to open it you don't need to actually export it and we'll be going through each of these folders individually extracting the contents of these folders that is to say the dll files and placing them in the game's directory like this. Now in my case I've already done this which is why I get this warning but it's the same file so I'm gonna go ahead and replace it. And now for the DLSS frame generation like this. The FSR 3.1 DirectX 12 like so and finally the Vulkan and there you go. And this is where the NVIDIA Profile Inspector is going to come in. So we extract this folder anywhere you want really, like I did right here. And we have two different versions of it. We have the revamped and the revamped light, but for the purposes of this video, it doesn't really matter which one you go with. So I'm going to use the base one and let's boot up the application. You're going to get this warning from Microsoft Defender, but click more info and run anyway. Allow this app to make changes. And we're gonna go ahead and download this. You may not have to. Now, once you finish downloading the Microsoft desktop runtime we go ahead and open up the application and here we have the Nvidia profile inspector this is what is going to allow us to actually change the DLSS that is enabled inside of Monster Hunter Wilds we're gonna click here on top on profiles and we're gonna be looking out for the Monster Hunter Wilds executable keep scrolling down up until you see DMs and here is Monster Hunter Wilds oh wow they even have frontier here select the profile Monster Hunter Wilds and below the profile you're going to have this green tab right here that should have the Monster Hunter Wilds executable. As you can see I have Monster Hunter Wilds beta executable and the regular base game Monster Hunter Wilds executable. If you don't have the Monster Hunter Wilds.exe then you're going to want to need to click on here where it says add an application to current profile and then you're going to look for the game's directory which once again you can simply open this way on Steam, copy the path this way and then inside of the Nvidia profile inspector you paste the trajectory here like this and then you select the executable monster hunter wilds 
like that. Of course, this didn't work because it was already assigned to this profile, but if you run into that problem, that is how you fix it. And here on the very right side of the screen, you click apply changes. And of course, since we downloaded a bunch of DLLs to change the DLSS, we're gonna come over here into 0.2, DLSS overrides, and we're going to change a few values. Start off by turning this on like this, Keep everything else as default, but on the SR preset, you will have to select preset K. And before you close up the NVIDIA profile inspector, apply these changes, and now you're free to close the application. So now when we start Monster Hunter Wilds, you'll be able to see the difference the moment that you start the application. Again, this menu here simply indicates that you have the RE framework installed, which by the way you can use for a lot of very useful things, such as disabling the vignette in the game, having free cam to look around the map if you want to, or increase your POV which I actually did, albeit very slightly. And again, the way that you close out this menu is by pressing insert, that is the default key, and you open it by pressing insert once again. And now that we are inside of the game, we can see just how well the game runs, and the game is actually running pretty smoothly, and the thing you guys might not realize is that I actually have the 4K texture pack downloaded, which is what was giving me a big issue. Before the game released, us reviewers didn't have access to the 4K texture pack, and the game was running decently for me, but now that I have the texture pack, the game it wasn't running at a smooth 60 frames per second and now it's running totally fine for me no issues whatsoever now one thing is funny, I have kept my frame rate at 60, since people on my stream can't watch anything above 60 FPS, it doesn't get shown on the stream, but it's actually going above the cap, staying at 75 FPS, which is pretty funny. Now let's see if the frame rate stays consistent while I fight this Lala Barina for a second. Honestly, it looks pretty fine so far. I'm really happy with this performance. Yeah, there's a ton of particles happening and appearing on screen, but the frame rate's not going down, it's staying consistent, so I'm definitely very happy with this. It's a huge improvement. And again, I imagine that it's going to run even better. I'll be able to get an even higher frame rate if I start disabling a couple of other things, such as ray tracing, lowering the shadow quality, not using the 4K texture pack and all of that. So if you're struggling with your FPS while playing Monster Hunter Wilds, definitely give this a try. Oh wow, that was a two minute quest. Damn. Something else that you can do that can help boost your FPS is while you have the game open, you can go into your task manager and go down into details and you look for Monster Hunter Wilds right here and then you right click and set the priority to high. This will allow your PC to allocate more resources to the game and usually allows you to get just a few more additional frames out of it. And also if you want to make your game look more colorful and overall just look better, one thing you can do is download a reshade preset out of all of these that are already available on day one on the Nexus mod page, like I have done so myself. So this is the game without the reshade, and this is the game with the reshade. It's a very small tweak, but makes the colors pop out and look a lot better like this. And of course, you're able to fully customize these shaders in any way you want. On that note, you may also want to download the Fluffy Mod Manager, a mod manager that is commonly used for Capcom games, and it is very likely that most mods for Monster Hunter Wilds are going to be running with the assumption that that you have the fluffy mod manager so you can go ahead and install it right away. Now if after all of that your game is still underperforming or if you simply do not wish to install anything to your game then I'm going to walk you through the settings that I believe you can tweak as they are the ones I found to be the most impactful when it comes to your overall game performance. Now obviously the texture pack you don't need to have the 4k texture pack but given how much better the high texture packs looks over the medium ones I would actually like to keep the high ones and try lowering everything else, especially the mesh quality, the fur quality, as well as the shadow distance and making sure that you also disable ray tracing. Reducing all of these settings here actually has a very significant impact on the overall performance of the game and a lot of these settings on page 2 you won't even notice. And honestly the same can be said about most of these things, though I would argue that you should try to keep your bloom at the very least low if not high, simply because some textures do not look very good and the bloom can actually hide some of the ugly 
that is in the game. And the same can be said about the variable rate shading. Ideally you want to keep it at off or balanced and you want to save performance as a last resort. So you would rather turn the rest of these settings off before you tweak these two. Honestly the overall situation with the PC performance of Wilds is pretty regrettable. The game is absolutely fantastic as I have said multiple times I have put over 150 hours into this title and will likely put many many more hundreds of hours because I love it so much. I personally do not get to experience many of these issues but I know that they have been affecting a ton of people and honestly it's inexcusable that Capcom released the game in this manner. Of course they will be putting out all sorts of different patches trying to improve the overall performance of the game but truth be told the game should be launching with a better state. But it is what it is we do what we can and this is what I found to be the best way to improve the overall performance of the game. Hopefully this works for you and if it has then please subscribe to the channel and look forward to more Monster Hunter Wilds videos. With that being said my name is Dark Hero thank you all so much for watching and as always happy hunting. Thank you.